here working in the garden and Teddy and Annalisa just came up from the river with a whole bunch of oysters. What's going on here? Well, I pulled some out just to look at them um, to see what was growing on them. These are the dead ones that died last year. We just chucked them in the river in hopes that it would create more habitat and stuff. Right, um, so real quick, we uh, used to be, we kind of still are, uh, volunteers for the Restore Our Shores Foundation um, in the Brevard County Zoo. Um, we were raising oysters and clams on our dock down um, by the river mm -hmm. for the program. Um, we would raise them from babies uh, to adults and then they would go and place them on artificial reefs in the Indian River Lagoon uh, to help improve the water quality and stuff. And we had like we 10 cages last I year. I think we had 12. 12 that yeah. um, all died. We might have had 16. We might have had 16. I'd have to go back and look at the videos. But uh, we did a whole bunch of videos last year and the year before showing the progress of all of them. But last year we had a huge, um, what, a huge what? loss. Um, it was just a fish kill. There was uh, no oxygen in the water. It was the, um, I guess, a bunch of runoff caused a lot of um, an algae bloom that uh, killed the fish. But, um, so I, it wasn't so just, it was a fish kill, it wasn't just our oysters, it was... Um, yeah, there was dead fish in the river. Yeah, we everything. happened to be out of town. We were out of town, when, so we didn't yeah. know. We would have known, um, we could have taken the oysters out and just left them out. We could have tried that, yes. That yeah. If, if we, there. so if we could have seen the beginnings of the um, fish kill, we could have taken them out. Oysters will live out of the water for quite some time. I mean, I, I think that they, if, I could be wrong on this, but I think even up to weeks, Maybe I think even. that's if they're refrigerated. Okay, maybe. Um, um, but, but certainly days, they would be yeah, okay yeah. on the dock. Yeah, because um, it's just like naturally tied. Day. Sometimes they don't ever get covered by water. They're like at the top of the reefs, you know. Right. So actually when we were raising them on our dock, um, we would have to pull them out every week to mimic a low tide. Um, and the reason we do that is... Uh, it helps to kill off some of the parasites and um, well, everything predators. Everything in the water. Right. And they yeah. need to be in the water. Right. But um, I asked him what we should do this time if it happens again. And she said that there is some oxygen during daylight hours because the sun can penetrate oh. some. So you Of can, the algae bloom? Of is the it? algae bloom. Yeah, like, so if you, if you put them in the water just to like rinse them. Um, that would kind of keep them keep them alive too, but at nighttime there's no oxygen in the water, and that's usually when the fish kills happen. That's interesting. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So um, so these are some ones that died last year, and you guys inspected them. You don't think that there's any babies on here? Correct? No, we saw some like that look some um, like little little like sewer caps on them that looked like baby oysters. Um, I threw those back in, okay. uh, but they looked like they were like some kind of fish egg of some kind. Cause we saw yeah. one that had like a little tadpole. It had like an eye in it almost. Inside of it, it gotcha. yeah. with a tail that was like wiggling around. So, and there were crabs like all in them too. Yeah. It was really, it's really good habitat for the crabs. Yeah. Okay, so what is your plan for them? Well, um, I think we're gonna wait till the water gets warm because once the water gets warm, um, the oysters, I think, can uh, release their spat to stick to other materials, which the oyster shell is like probably the best material for them to stick back onto. So hmm. I'm gonna put some extra cages next to um, the ones that we're growing on our neighbor's dock. Right, um, so we're kind of helping out a neighbor. We're kind of sharing the responsibilities because um, we have we just aren't able to commit this season to have our own cages uh -huh. so but we're our neighbor signed up so yeah. we're helping them which has been fun so we have some oysters growing over there um and i want to put some of these how many cages do you with need it. um i just need two today so i'm okay. making them lighter because last year i felt like our cages got too packed tight so i'm trying to um spread my oysters out this time so they're not as heavy at the end yeah. okay so we have our cages left over from last season we're gonna we have to return m most of these to the foundation um, but we're gonna use some of them to like she just said i guess split up the um, split oysters up the that ones we have. that our neighbors have because yeah. um they're at the they're starting to grow fast again so, so. you just need two yeah let's see there's two four six eight ten twelve so we had 13 it yeah. looks like mine yeah, I counted those. So it looks like we had 13 last year, and like she said, every single one of the cage, every single one of those cages was filled with oysters, and they all died. It was a yeah. big, was it was a big days. bummer, but it was. But they were, I would say, they were a little packed <clears throat> too tight. They were starting to grow on the outside of the cages, and it was creating a lot of work for us. And like we just, they get so heavy. I felt like we couldn't keep, like we kept having to like 
constantly move them into cages. And I think that if we had done it early on in the in the season, like what we're doing t today, um, and just keep them light from day one, then the oysters can like make like the beautiful like clusters um, instead of them getting like jagged edges and stuff yeah. and they die too yeah. when they're crammed in like that so and it's harder to find the predators clusters. and it's harder to find they, yeah there's like crabs yeah. and fish that like live inside of it for like weeks feasting we gotta, what's that we got a squirrel Not up oysters. there in the palm trees all right so i'm gonna get back to gardening uh you guys are gonna go over to our neighbor's house and pull out the oysters right yep. and see what what you got over there so um everybody stick with us and uh you know, He's driving. All right, that's good. Okay, so we brought the two cages down with some oysters. We're gonna leave the oysters yeah. here. I was just pulling them up just to look at them. Probably gonna put them back in the water, let them rest in there until it gets yeah. warm outside, and then maybe we'll make a couple cages and see if we can yeah. collect some spat from these that are growing on this dock. But how many oyster cages did she start with? She started with two cages, which is typical. That's what most yeah. volunteers get. Um, that was what we got our first year. Um, I think maybe we got four our first year because yeah, um, I was always asking for more. Yeah. Um, but she, we're now upgrading her to four cages, so. So that they'll just um, stay nice and um, spaced out. Yeah. Another thing I've noticed since doing them over here, um, uh, my neighbor suggested that we hang the oysters from these two pillars on her dock right here that don't go all the way down to the uh, ground. She so, um, those two over there. yeah, but these are too close to the pillars. I think we're going to do, a, I think we're going to add them right where we're doing them now and just have two off of each. Okay. Um, so you want to pull them up? Yep. So here's the page okay. number one, slowly. Let's see what's in there. It looks like they're starting to spit water. So they're already getting a little heavy. They're real awkward. That's really the problem. Okay, cage number one. This is cage number one. Th these looked really good last week. Yeah. Um, everything, I didn't see anything on them last week. There's a little fish flopping around in there. A shrimp. Okay, cage number two. All right, this cage had a lot of sea squirts on them. Oh, whoa. Which you don't should... damage the... So Teddy's kind of shaking it just and getting all the silt off that he can because that'll save us time rinsing them. They're real awkward to pull up. Like, there we go. But, oh, those yeah. have a lot of silt on them. Yeah, and they have a lot of sea squirts on them. So should we start by rinsing them, then spread them out? I think we should pull them out and space them out and then rinse them. Okay. So if you want to start letting them out, I'm going to pull the hose and then we'll get right back Crap. with you guys. Alright, so Teddy's washing them off. I just got them all hung. So now we have two hanging off of each of these posts that don't go into the water. Um, there are sea squirts. You can see them squirting all over this batch here. So... Pull them off. The Teddy's rinsing. We're gonna take out maybe half of these. This is what they look like. They're growing really well. There's some sea squirts right there. It's starting to get 
some barnacles on there. You can pop those off when they're little with your thumb. Or you have to use like a, um, a piece of metal or a screwdriver to pop them off once they get bigger. But that looks pretty good. So as I'm transporting them, I'm gonna pull everything off these sea squirts and barnacles. Whoa, this is like a giant sea squirt. Oh, it's a big one. You definitely need to be wearing gloves when you're doing this. These are really sharp. All right, you can go look over here. got some there was some barnacles growing right here and some more sea squirts so I'm gonna clean off all these split them up and then let them sit out for six about to six to eight hours because they're still kind of young but I think we can give them the full time now and uh, then put them back in the water. All right. 